this podcast, we're going to find the measures of some angles using properties of parallel lines. All right, so angle one and angle, and the 93 degree angle there, the one that's marked 93 degrees, are what kind of angles? Well, they're across from one another, formed by intersecting lines, share vertex. Those are vertical angles. Of course, we know that vertical angles are always congruent. And therefore, angle 1 equals 93 degrees. Okay, let's look at, I'm going to mark 93 there. Angle 3 and the 93 degree angle are, all right, so let's figure out what kind of angles those are. All right, so they're on the same side of the transversal, they're both on the left, and notice they're both below the line. So they are corresponding angles. All right, so now those would be called corresponding angles whether or not the lines are parallel. But if the lines are parallel, something special occurs. Right, so they're congruent because the lines are parallel. Right, so therefore, that angle is also 93 degrees. Right, so now we found the measure of angle 1. Right, that's 93 degrees. Let's find the measure of angle 2. Angle 3 and angle 2, right, so notice they're next to one another. Right, they're formed by intersecting lines. Together they form a straight angle. So angle 3 and angle 2 are a linear pair. By the way, this are in your notes, so make sure you're filling them out. They are always supplementary. A right, supplementary, remember, means they add to 180 degrees. So therefore, angle it says angle 3. We know angle 3. We're looking for angle 2. So just change that to an angle 2. All right, therefore, angle 2 is going to be equal to 180 minus 93, right? Because angle 3 is. Actually, I'm going to write that in there. 180 minus angle 3. And then we know angle 3 is 93 degrees now that we have solved that using vertical angles and corresponding angles. So angle 2 is 180 minus 93, which means angle 2 is equal to 87 degrees. And there we go. We have found the measure of angle 1 and angle 2 using properties of parallel lines, but also properties of vertical angles and linear pair angles. Right? So we use all of our all of the different relationships we've learned. We want to find the measure of x and y and explain your reasoning. Of course, I made it easy to explain your reasoning because it's a fill in there. Angle x and the 72 degree angle are, notice they're adjacent angles, they form a straight angle. They are a linear pair. So they are linear pair angles. Of course, we know they're always going to be supplementary. So that means that x is equal to 180 minus 72, or 108 degrees. Right? So notice our lines are parallel here. x and y, what kind of angles are x and y? Well, they're on opposite sides of the transversal. One's on, x is on the sort of the left-hand side, y is on the right-hand side, right? And they're on the outsides of our, of our lines, of our parallel lines. So those are alternate exterior angles. And they are congruent because the lines are parallel. Those are only going to be congruent when the lines are parallel. So therefore, angle y here is the exact same measure as angle x. And since angle x is 108 degrees, 
Angle Y is also 108 degrees. And there we go. Again, using properties of angles formed by parallel lines and linear pair angles. Let's do another one. All right, so we want to find the measure of x and y. Explain your reasoning. All right, so we have parallel lines here. Angle y and blank. Well, we, have, we know one angle measure here. That's this one. That's 90 degrees, All right? So angle y and let's kind of give it a name here. Let's just call it angle 2. I don't know. Z, X, or not X, P, whatever you want. All right, so uh, angle Y and angle 2 are their vertical angles. All right, those are vertical angles. So they have to be congruent. And let's just, well, we'll just be specific. Angle 2 here, whatever you want to call it is a 90 degree angle. So we know that y here equals 90 degrees, right? Because it's a vertical with another, with that right angle. Angle x and blank angle y are, right? So same as before, they're on the Opposite sides of that transversal outside the lines. Those are alternate exterior angles. And they are not just not just any alternate exterior angles. They're formed, let's add this, very, very important, by parallel lines. So therefore, I'm going to use my little abbreviation there, therefore, angle X is congruent to angle Y. Right? And we already found angle Y. So therefore, and that means that angle X is 90 degrees too. And you know what? They're all 90 degrees. Right? Because we've got linear pair angles, they'd be 90 degrees. And we've got vertical angles, they'd be 90 degrees. So actually, if one of these, if you have parallel lines and one of them is 90 degrees, they're all 90 degrees. We want to find the measure of x and y and explain our reasoning. All right, so we've got parallel lines. Angle y and our 85 degree angle here. We'll just call it by its measure. Are blank angles. So they're on opposite sides of the transversal, outside the parallel lines. So those are alternate exterior and right, angles. And it says angles. Alternate exterior angles. So that means that angle Y is 85 degrees as well. Angle X and we can still use that 85 degree angle. They have a special relationship too, right? These two here, this one and this one, right? They're adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines. Those are linear pair angles. And of course, we know linear pair angles are supplementary. So that means that, therefore, uh, angle X plus 85 is equal to 180 degrees. If we subtract 85 from both sides, angle X equals 95 degrees. All right, so this one here is 95 degrees. And there you go. There you have it. We have solved for angle X and angle Y. Let's do some more. We're not done. All right, but we are done solving for uh, angles for, for a moment. And we're going to learn about one last um, parallel line relationship, and that is consecutive interior angles converse. It's also called same side interior angles. And that is if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the same side or consecutive interior angles 
are, are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So they are between the lines, right? In between those, those two lines, and on the same side of our transversal. And if those angles are supplementary, we know our lines are parallel. So if angle three plus angle five equals 180 degrees, then line R has to be parallel to line S. Also, and I'm not sure if both of these things are in your notes, so make sure you add whatever might be missing. If the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four equals 180 degrees, so that's the other pair of consecutive interior angles, right? If those are supplementary, then line R is parallel to line S, right? And it works the other way. If line R, so we can use, we can use the um, consecutive interior angles being supplementary to prove the lines are parallel, but then we also know if the lines are parallel, if R is parallel to S, then we know those consecutive interior angles have to be supplementary. Then angle two plus angle four has to equal 180 degrees, and angle three plus angle five has to equal 180 degrees. And that will only be true when our lines are parallel. All right, so here we have again, same side or consecutive interior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the same side angles are supplementary. All right, so angle, measure of angle three plus angle six is 180 degrees. The measure of angle four plus angle five is 180 degrees. It also works out, it also ha happens to be true for our same side exterior angles. We don't usually use this as a proof, but this has happened to be true as well. So angle, uh, the ones on the outside there, angle two plus angle seven are gonna be supplementary, add to 180 and angle one plus angle eight will also add to 180. And of course, that's because, notice that, we know the alternate interior angles are congruent, right? These are congruent, and or excuse me, alternate exterior angles are congruent, and together they have to add to um, 180 degrees, angle one and angle two, right? And angle seven and angle eight, right? Because those, those are a linear pair. So if, angle one plus angle two was 180 degrees, right? and angle seven plus angle eight is 180 degrees, and angle one and angle seven are congruent, we could just, or angle one and angle seven are congruent, let me make that look clear. Actually, I'm gonna write that down. And so it's like, a, this is like a little mini informal proof. All right, so angle one plus angle two, equals 180 degrees. Angle seven plus angle eight equals 180 degrees. And angle two is congruent to angle eight. And angle one is congruent to angle seven. All right, notice I could just replace, do a substitution Right? We're going to do a substitution over at subs. Do I have enough room to write substitution property? No. Let me try that again. My ears keep popping, and it's really, really annoying. I don't know if that has ever happened to you where your ears keep popping. All right, so here we're using the substitution property. We could replace angle one with, or angle seven with angle one. And notice now we have angle one plus angle eight is 180 degrees, right? So we've kind of proven that our same side exterior angles are gonna to have to be supplementary. And then the same thing here, right? So angle one plus angle two is 180. We could replace um, angle seven, angle one there, with angle seven, and now we have, that's just a substitution, and now we would have angle seven plus angle two is 180 degrees, and those are our same side exterior angles. All right, so let's do a little solving. If the measure of angle three is 63 degrees, find the measure of angle six and explain your answer. So. 
Since line K is parallel to line M, our consecutive interior angles, there we go, are supplementary and angle 3 plus angle 6 equals 180 degrees. Right? Now if we just replace, we know the angle 3 is 63 degrees. Right? We have 63 plus angle 6 is 180 degrees. And if we subtract 63 degrees from both sides, angle 6 has to be equal to 127 degrees. And there we go. That's all there is. Oops, excuse me. 117 degrees. Just, just subtracted a wee bit too fast. And therefore angle 6 is equal to 117 degrees. Because 117 plus 63 is equal to 180. And there we go, right? So we've, we've uh, looked a little bit here at consecutive interior angles, and we can use those to prove our lines are parallel. So let us continue. All right, so let's take a look at these problems. And we're going to solve for some missing variables. What's the relationship between each pair of angles? In the first example, we have... alternate exterior angles formed by parallel lines. And we know that our alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent when they're formed by, ex or when they're formed by parallel lines. So therefore, 3x plus 17 is equal to 4x minus 22. Now we want to get the variables on one side, the numbers on the other, so let's subtract 3x from both sides. We have 17 equals x minus 22, and then we'll subtract 22 to get the numbers on the other side. All right, so we have 39 is equal to x. And that's actually all we're asked to find, the value of x. If it said, so if we were asked to find the measure of the angles, We just substitute into the expression. Oops, we lost a t. I'll just abbreviate. Um, I'll write expression on the next line. Right, so our measure of our angles, I could take either one, right? Because they're gonna be they're gonna be congruent. If I wanted to check, I could plug into both and just double check they're congruent. But both of them should give me the exact same answer if, unless I've made a solving error. So four times thirty-nine minus twenty-two, that's gonna be so four times thirty would be 120, and four times nine would be thirty-six. That's gonna be 156 minus twenty-two is equal to hundred and 34. Let's double check and make sure we didn't make a mistake. All right, so here this would be 3 times, because anyone can make a mistake, 3 times 39 plus 17. All right, so 3 times 30, two, 3 times 30 would be 90, and 3 times 9 is 27. All right, so uh, 90 plus 27 is 117. Add another 17, that's 134. Alright, so now we can feel pretty good because we got the same answer for both of them. I'm going to move that down a little bit. There we go. Alright, so if you're only asked to solve for x, we could stop. If you're asked to find the measure of the angles, just plug it in. We want to find the value of x here. Alright, so these are consecutive interior angles. And it's important to note 
that those are consecutive interior angles formed by parallel lines because the relationship only holds when we know our lines are parallel. And of course, we can see they're parallel because they're, we're told, right? We don't have to look at them. You can't, as a matter of fact, if they weren't marked, we would not know they were parallel. But we see our little mark here, and that says parallel. So they're formed by parallel lines, and we know, therefore, they are supplementary. And actually, up here, rather than putting this in parentheses, I'm just going to write R congruent. But I didn't put a period there. All right, so we have 2x plus 4x is equal to 180, because supplementary angles add to 180. So we can combine our like terms. 2x plus 4x is 6x. And divide both sides by 6. I'm kind of running out of space here, so just, just remember I divided by 6. Right? And so uh, 180 divided by 6 is going to be 30. All right, so x is equal to 30. If we were to plug it back in, uh, this angle here, therefore, is 60, 2 times 30. And then 4 times 30 is 120. And notice that adds up to 180. All right, so there's the measure of those angles. All right, so we can use our properties to solve for variables or angles. And we're continuing on. All right, so... We're going to do a little practice here um, together. So we're given the measure of angle 6 is 67 degrees. And we want to find each measure, the measure of each of the angles that are listed here. right? And we're going to um, determine the relationship between a pair of angles. That gives us that answer. Of course, uh, if we're doing an angle 7 first, the measure of angle 7 first, uh, we're going to have to use the measure of angle 6. After that, we can decide to use different angles. right? And so we'll just write down which angles we're going to use and the relationship. Right? So we want to find the measure of angle 7. Well, what kind of angles are angle 6 and angle 7? Right? So we know that angle 6 and angle 7 are a linear pair. And we know linear pair angles add up to 180. So therefore, angle 6 plus angle 7 equals 180. We know angle 6, that's 67. And if we subtract 67 from both sides, we're going to have 113. So 113 degrees is equal to angle 7. All right? So there we found the measure, and we justified our answer. Very important. Let's find the measure of angle, and I'm going to write down that that was 113 degrees. Let's find the measure of angle 8. Well, let's use the fact, let's use angle 6 again. And what kind of relationship do angle 6 and angle 8 have? where they're located, right? So angle 6 and angle 8 are vertical angles. And we know vertical angles are always congruent. Always. doesn't matter what kind of lines they are. So therefore, if angle 6 is 67 degrees, so is angle 8. Right, so let's write that in, 67 degrees. Now let's find the measure of angle 9. Let's use angle 7 this time. All right, so now what's the relationship between angle 7 and angle 9? Well, they're across from one another, and they're formed by intersecting lines. They're also uh, vertical angles. So angle 9 and angle 7 are vertical angles. And we know, therefore, they are congruent. 
And so that means angle line has to equal 113 degrees. All right, so now we want the measure of angle 10. Let's use angle 6. All right, so what kind of relationship do angle 6 and angle 10 have? Notice they're the same position on a line, same side of the transversal. So angle 6 and angle 10 are corresponding angles. And not just any corresponding angles formed by parallel lines. All right, and therefore, they've got to be congruent. We know alternate, or excuse me, our corresponding angles are congruent. And so since angle 6 is 67 degrees, so is angle 10. Okay, now let's find the measure of angle 11. Let's use angle 7. Okay? So what kind of relationship do angle, ten, angle 11 and angle 7 have? They're outside the parallel, lane, parallel lines, opposite sides of that transversal. Okay. So angle, seven, angle 11 are alternate exterior angles. And we know alternate exterior, and I, I, actually let's say alternate exterior angles form by parallel lines. Let's not forget that. Okay, so alternate exterior angles formed by parallel lines. And we know those are congruent. And so since angle 7 is 113 degrees, so is angle 11. Let's find the measure of angle 12. And uh, let's, use, let's use angle 8 this time. All right, so notice angle 8 and angle 12. Same position on the line, same side of the transversal. So angle 8 and angle 12 are corresponding angles formed by parallel lines. And of course we know they're congruent. So since angle 8 is 67 degrees, so is angle 12. And let's find the last one. All right, let's use angle 7 because I even have it written there. I right, want to find the measure of angle 13. So angle, thir actually, you know what? Let's use a measure of angle 9. I want to use 9. I don't want to use 7. I haven't used this relationship yet. I'm going to just get rid of that. Maybe. All right. And I want to use angle 7. All right, so let's look at, I see, uh, not, excuse me, not, did I say seven? Not seven. That's the one I got rid of. I want to use angle nine. Angle nine. Let's look at angle nine and angle 13. What kind of angles are those? All right, they're between the two parallel lines, opposite sides of the transversal. So angle nine and angle 13 are alternate interior angles and they're formed by parallel lines and we know alternate interior angles they are congruent so therefore since angle 9 is 113 degrees so is angle 13 and look at that we found all of the measures of all of our angles and notice, we have only two different measures here, 67 and 113. And that's always going to happen, right? Because all the angles that are formed by parallel lines, they're either congruent or they're supplementary. <laughs> and there we, we found all of our angle measures, right? And we used, we justified our answers using postulates and theorems that we've learned about angle relationships that are formed by intersecting lines, 
like the vertical angles and linear pair angles, and ones that are true when our lines are parallel. Our alternate interior angles, our alternate exterior angles, um, our corresponding angles. The only one I didn't use, I didn't use consecutive interior, but I could have, right? Notice that angle 9 plus angle 10 here. I'm going to just write it over here. Angle 9 plus angle 10 add up to 180 degrees. That's an 8. Likewise, angle 8 plus angle 13 add up to 180 degrees as well. Right? So we could have used those as well. All right? So I think that was the one last problem. And then I'll save the rest for, oh, you know what? I'll just save the rest for the next podcast. So we'll finish up in the next podcast. All right? Bye for now.